shit! What? What the fuck? KNLS 2, released in 2010, is a direct sequel to not so good Dead Men. Dog Days improves upon the first game in almost every front, but it also has some issues that we will go through further in this video. Dog Days introduces an all new and fresh plot, so if you haven't played its prequel, your chances are you are not missing much in terms of characters and the game's universe. The story this time featured is one of the better ones when compared to IO's previous entries in the series. The story starts with Lynch waiting in a street in Shanghai, China for his business partner Kane. Lynch has invited Kane and needs his assistance in completing a particularly ludicrous arms deal. If everything went according to the plan, then Kane and Lynch would have ended up with a pile of cash which they desperately needed but things went south when Lynch accidentally shot and killed the daughter of a very rich and a powerful man. And in revenge, our anti-heroes ended up losing more than they bargained for. The game once again is played from a third person's perspective where you control Lynch whereas Kane is now controlled by an AI and one of the things which I didn't like in the previous entry was weak shooting mechanic which is safe to say that has been fine tuned to address these issues in this game. The shooting in the game feels much better and the way the combat in the game occurs makes shooting in the game feel more organic and natural. This soft cover based system from the last game has also been addressed to iron out its issues and swooping in and out of cover is just a press of a button away and most of the objects which are waist high or more can be used to shield yourself away from enemy's fire. From the cover, Lynch can once again blind fire or can manually paint the targets and eliminating them in the process. Blind fire when compared to the last game has better accuracy compared to the last game's manual firing system and that in its own right speaks a lot about the improvement done in this game. The weapon choices in the game is quite adept. You have the option to use handguns, rifles, shotguns and light and heavy machine guns. Each weapon in the game feels different from one another with each of them having their own distinct weapon spread and recoil. You would enjoy combat in the game more often but the combat has some minor faults which we will discuss a little later on this video. My one of the biggest complaints from the last game was about the AI for enemies and your own crew members featured in the game. In the previous title, your crew member could easily be gunned down in a firefight owing to their lack of self-preservation and you will have to more often than not look after them and keep patching them up because if they died while sustaining injuries the game will result in over and you will have to aside from looking after yourself will have to actively watch out for your crew members which was frustrating at least for me whereas the enemy AI in this game is incredibly well compared to the previous game which had generic AI which made sure that the enemies in the game were glued to just one spot and the enemies never used any advanced combat tactics in this game but in dog days the the enemies do a very good job of flanking your positions, putting pressure on you and they are generally quite competent with their job in making the combat feel a desperate fight for life and death. I enjoyed the combat due to enemies overwhelming size and their determination to make your life difficult. It is always advised that you should move from cover to cover more often than not and choose your targets carefully. And as the game progresses, the combat feels tough which is always a good thing in my rule book. The game once again features a regenerating health system which makes it easier to recover your lost health by firing from cover and wait for the system to replenish your health after a particularly chaotic firefight. But this time the developers have made some changes to the health system whereas in the previous title after getting mortally wounded player has to wait for the crew members to revive them manually using a shot of adrenaline. Well at this time the game has done away with this mechanic completely instead of waiting to be revived after getting yourself wounded the game gives you the option to get up by the press of a button and hide behind a cover and wait for the health to regenerate and this time you also also don't have to worry about your partner Kane. He is quite capable in firefights and he needs no one to watch for his back. And the game this time features a much tighter and coherent experience but the game has its own issues.
issues which is present in most likely situations due to the art direction which the developers took while designing the game. The camera or you could say the third person camera feels like it is being controlled or filmed by someone for a low budget movie and the game features shaking camera which sometimes make me feel like having motion sickness which is more apparent when Lynch sprints. The amount of camera shake really was not needed to convey their artistic feelings and the game aside from shaking camera has chromatic aberration, lens flare and sensor markers which makes the experience feel less like a video game and more like a low budget adult movie. The game offers really graphic albeit censored sequences which may not be for everyone's liking. Some gamers might like it but for me I had to adjust myself with the game's theme. The setting of the game world which is based in Shanghai feels more richly packed with details and is more genuine and authentic when compared to the last game. The developers clearly learned a lot from their mistakes and they took that experience and came with a series of genuine improvements which makes Dog Days far better whether it is due to its storytelling or sheer brutality and vibrant world of Shanghai which is well realized. Kane Unleashed 2 is exactly the example of how a sequel should be made. It is not to be assumed that the game is without any faults which is mostly related to their design decision choices. But the narrative once again shines and it is well paced and at some points even has some thematic sequences that uplifts the game above mediocrity. Kane Unleashed 2 lasted for 5 hours for me and within 5 hours of my playtime I saw agony, death and brutality. The game itself with what little time you spent playing this made sure that everyone have their own opinion of this title. And for me the game's set pieces or claustrophobic inducing combat sequences are a journey full of agony and pain made for mature audience. Not everyone will agree with my or game's statements and I completely respect that. I believe that everyone who invests his hard earned money and time are entitled for their own opinion. So this is the point. I must call it a day for this experience video and thank you IO Interactive for this piece of art and thank you to the viewers of my video from the bottom of my heart.